Hey everybody, James Intracasso, managing editor of Arcadia here. My pronouns are he, him, and I am here talking with one of our amazing authors from Arcadia 13. Kat, let people out there know who you are. What did you write for Arcadia 13? Hi everyone, I'm Kat Kruger. My pronouns are she, her, and I wrote uh, Monsters of Wonderland for Arcadia uh, issue 13. Um, I'm usually found at d20 dames i'm a dungeon master there <laughs> yes yeah you are a, a wearer of many hats uh in, yes. in this and many industries uh and yes, uh, i true. i think before we dive in uh before we dive into monsters of wonderland just tell people a little bit a, a smattering of uh, <laughs> of the things that you've done the highlights of your career um working with nerds both candy and real oh my gosh yes uh so yeah i'm i'm a freelance game designer at my own company steampunk unicorn studio um and uh prior to becoming a game designer i was actually a young adult author so i have a trilogy of werewolf urban fiction books out there um i wrote um, a movie adaptation of a canadian um uh, a canadian film uh, called Weirdos, and then I eventually became a game designer, and so I've worked on things like, um, obviously, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I wrote a, 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 one of the Plane Shift um, Magic the Gathering D&D um, adventures called um, Ixalan X Marks the Spot. Um, I've also worked for Hasbro doing um, board game design. I've worked on uh, Betrayal at Baldur's Gate, Hero Quest, uh, and coming out um, in the next month or so, uh, uh, Betrayal at House on the Hill, third edition. Um, yeah, and I've written a lot of a lot of D and um, I am the dungeon master at D Twenty Dames, which is an actual play podcast. It's all fem. Um, and family friendly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's great. It's an amazing podcast that people should check out. And that's actually how I first heard of you, Kat. But then I found out you did game design as well. And I knew we had to bring you in for Arcadia. So give me the high level. What is Monsters of Wonderland? Um, you know, if people out there have not checked it out yet, tell us, what is it? Monsters of Wonderland is basically a dream come true for me because I love Alice in Wonderland and I love Dungeons and Dragons and I got to do a combination of both. <laughs> so essentially Very I took Very cool. Yeah, I took I took immediate like direct inspiration from Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland and um I I knew at the time uh when I pitched this that um uh, the Wild Light, uh, Wild Beyond the Witch Light um, was coming out, and I had a bit of a sneak peek because I uh, wrote a dungeon craft for it. Um, so I knew that the Jabberwock was, was going to be part of that, and I wasn't going to touch that. Um, so I went with some of the um, odder, lesser known um, creatures that you don't necessarily think would have a stat block or. Um, yeah, just um, I just I just picked creatures that I thought were going to be really fun based on their descriptions, um, and then worked some monster um, abilities and actions into their um, their characteristics. Yeah, it's so cool, and it's uh, I'm a big fan mm. of. Uh, specifically the Jabberwocky poem, right? The Jabberwock um, was this uh, poem that we used to have to memorize to get extra credit in mm -hmm. Latin um, because it was sort of about oh, wow. the use of language, right, for, for our teacher. Um, and then, of course, relates to D&D, &D too, because we talk about the Vorpal Sword uh, comes from that poem and everything. Yes. Um, and so uh, when you pitch this i also knew obviously the wild beyond the witch light was coming um and was excited to to get something in there i've already used some of these critters in my wild beyond the witch light game that nice. i'm currently running uh so it's been great so i want to dive in talk about our, our different creatures here uh let's start with the bandersnatch um and one thing that i'd love to do is talk about like 
your how much you knew from the source material about the Bandersnatch and how much of this had to be like, well, okay, well, now I need to fill in enough to make it a viable D&D creature. I think of like all the creatures um, didn't really have a lot of description except for the caterpillar. Uh, so, and uh, like I said, like Alice in Wonderland, huge, huge, huge fan uh, since I was a kid. And so I, was, I feel like I was fairly familiar with the, with what I was working with. Um, but that said, you know, um, except for the caterpillar, I think most of them didn't really have much of a, description per se um i think bandersnatch <laughs> and uh and mom Ras, um in particular they it's very vague um mm -hmm. yeah and you know i mean besides the snark which that's a different story we'll get there <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah yeah so so talk to me then about the bandersnatch and uh, you know, the, the lore and the stats, uh, we can call out some highlights. This is a totally original creature that you have created, and you can tell me a little bit about the design process, too, if you want. Sure. Uh, I mean, I started off just with the with the imagery of what the Bandersnatch was supposed, is supposed to look like based on uh, the description in um, Carol's work. So, uh, you know, I knew that it had, uh, it was like cat-like, um, and that it had um, future flying, flying claws, right? And I thought, as soon as I latched onto that word, I was like, this is going to be a very, very cool ability. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. players might not yeah. find it so, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm a huge fan of the Bandersnatch because of the Putrefying Claw, but also because it is a, a, a legendary creature and we don't often see, right? We talk about D&D. &D, many of us only play sort of the first 10 levels. The game gets complicated after that. Games sometimes fall apart before they reach those levels. Um, so to have a challenge rating 5 creature with legendary actions was really cool to be like oh cool we've got a boss monster and those are sort of few and far between at those first levels those one through five levels so to have that was great but also to have the putrefying claw to me in my mind makes the bandersnatch like a really unique um boss monster if you were to face them in combat um because the putrefying claw is, uh, well, I I'll let you tell people about it. What does the putrefying claw do? <laughs> it literally like, just like putrefies your flesh. So if you cannot cure <laughs> this, this uh, venom that courses through your veins within an hour, then you are done. Um, so <laughs> I think during play testing, we, we established that there had to be some sort of means of curing it yes. <laughs> <laughs> because it's technically not a poison. Yeah. Right. So, right. so there's exactly. this banders yeah, in my head, like the bandersnatch, it like, you know, it stalks down its prey, gives it the big old swipe with its putrefying claw. And it, you know, if you run away, that's fine because it's going to track you down because within an hour you are dead and it can just snack on you. <laughs> uh, yes, it's so good. It's so good that that is a, <laughs> a, a thing that can happen uh, now in our games. Um, and uh, the Bandersnatch, I just love that there's this evocative description for what this is and this creature that I have read about sort of in lore and in various places and is actually mentioned, uh, or I should say the word Bandersnatch is at least mentioned in Wild Beyond the Witchlight too. So now you actually mm -hmm. have like a thing to connect to it if you want to, yeah. um, which is yeah. great. Um, yeah, the other, the other thing the I really... Moth. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. The other thing I, I, I just wanted to say is like um, part of why I was really drawn to this is because there aren't the same amount of fey creatures um, in in stat blocks, um, and not ones that are necessarily as deadly as <laughs> some of these are. So I had a lot of fun filling in those gaps. <laughs> yeah, I mean that is so true that we we don't you know there are not only are there not as many fey creatures, you also have gaps 
within challenge ratings and things like that. So to have a lot of fey creatures to help sort of um, make things a little more interesting for when you take trips to the Feywild, but also to make things a little more whimsical, right? These creatures, mm -hmm. I think, are really imaginative. They're really the kind of thing you would expect to see, especially drawing from that Wonderland inspiration uh, made it really great. And we get to a very big Wonderland-inspired <laughs> creature with the Hag Moth. Uh, and so I'm wondering if you could break that one down for me. The Hag Moth and the Hag Caterpillar are just... yeah. Uh, Delightful. <laughs> Just a lot of fun. I love these. Uh, so inspiration, obviously, was the caterpillar. Um, and uh, what I wanted to do with this was, you know, I was thinking, um, well, what, you know, it, what does the caterpillar become? It becomes a butterfly. Or uh, So I started looking at um, real world inspiration for butterflies and caterpillars. And, you know, um, when I was looking at... Um, the caterpillar, I saw like these glass p caterpillars. They actually look like they're almost made out of glass. Um, but then I stumbled upon an actual cat, uh, a moth called a, a hag moth. And it is, if you Google it, it's just wild. It's, it's like this furry tarantula type weird thing. And it's, it, it's, toxic and I just as soon as I saw that I was I was inspired to connect the two together um, so uh, with the caterpillar uh, um, in um, in Wonderland um, it's this caterpillar that smokes a hookah pipe and is very trippy and there's a lot of like hallucinogenic stuff happening um, especially when you look at the um, the Disney-fied version of it. Um, and I really wanted to play off of that um, with the... So one of one of the abilities is, you know, um, uh, causing hallucinations. And with the hallucinations, what I wanted was for it to um, make people think that letters were actually coming out of um, people's mouths as they spoke, yes. things like that. It's like some weird stuff that messes with how you perceive your surroundings. Um, so yeah, so I started with the caterpillar as the base, and then worked its way up into into a flying moth. So there's some similarities between the two creatures because one is derived off the other, um, but the uh, caterpillar, uh, the moth, is uh, clearly more powerful. It has a layer and all sorts of fun little yeah. things. <laughs> yeah. And well, and the caterpillar gets one of my favorite things in the article, which is the poison suction cups, right? And that's another, <laughs> just a fun little difference because we've all had a caterpillar crawl on us and we all know the, you know, the, the, you can feel the little suction cups making their way across your arm or whatever as they crawl. Uh, and the idea that like there would be a much larger version of that with, venom in those cups uh was terrifying to me <laughs> yeah well okay terrifying in a fantasy way but i have to say that there are actual caterpillars that are very poisonous so uh so i right. i took inspiration from that because the... i saw I, I think at the same time or or shortly thereafter i saw an article in uh in an Ottawa newspaper. I'm, I'm originally from Canada and sometimes Canadian news c comes my way. And I saw like there was a whole bunch of like these poisonous caterpillars that were falling out of trees. And I just thought that was, that was great inspiration. If terrifying for real life. <laughs> yes. Yes. Great inspiration <laughs> and terrifying for sure. Wow. That's, that's amazing. I mean, the real world full of dangerous uh, and exciting things. Uh, so be careful when you're walking around in Ottawa. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, we come to what might be my favorite creature uh, in terms of art. Uh, anyway, the Mumrath. Yes. Um, yes. Tell us about the Mumrath because this, I just want to, just want to uh, cuddle this, this monstrous boy uh, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. have him sit at my feet. And that is not what he wants to do. No, but maybe he could if he if he's like a. You know, wasn't there another Arcadia um, um, issue where you can make oh, uh, yeah. little little buddies? <laughs> yes, yeah, so you can yeah, make a companion, a Momrath companion. Yes. yes. 
Yes. I mean, if Hex can do it, why can't you? <laughs> but yeah, these guys, these guys are, these little, these little creatures are, uh, this is the one that had uh, one of the f- least amount of description from Wonderland. And um, I think the various depictions of it throughout, um, throughout different stages of illustrations for the for wonderland have depicted it in different ways too so sometimes they're like these weird little flower creatures sometimes they're little pigs um and i really liked the idea that it would be a pig uh that was like had like sharp teeth um so (laughs) when i when you asked me for a description for the art i i i just love that you let me go for it. And it was just like, yeah, I want, I want a shark pig. Um, and maybe it's got like salamander hands. I don't know, but I, I definitely, and I, I, I showed you like a Photoshop of a, of a pig, pig right. fish. <laughs> <laughs> but the art for this, oh my gosh, it's, it's even better than I thought it, I could have imagined it. I love it so much. Yeah really good really really fun really really fun and it does i think fits your vision of the 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 creature very very well right um because this is a a big strong shark pig um with Mm -hmm. electrifying skin (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah green electrifying skin and it hides in muddy water um really great hag companions and it will just leap out and zap you yeah yeah, and it also has one of my favorite features. Uh, I know I keep saying this about these these creatures, but the fairy fire breath was something that I was just like, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> the idea that, right, this is a hag pet, right? Like as a, if it were a, a watchdog type creature, it's immediately mm-hmm. lighting up any intruders, making it easy for the yeah. hag to go blast, blast, blast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I loved, I loved uh I love giving it that feature. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, so let's talk about the snark, um, because I think this is one that we can get into. The hunting of the snark. That's a that's a Lewis Carroll poem right there. Uh, yeah. So let's let's talk about this one, because I think we've got some things to say. Yes. So the hunting of the snark is really interesting because in the story, uh, you know, people try to track down the snark and everybody's vision of it is different. Um, It is like wildly different. So sometimes it's soft and uh, sometimes it's like got claws. Sometimes, you know, the descriptions just completely change all the time. And then, you know, the people who go hunting for it, um, if they come back, they have these wildly different stories Sometimes they don't come back though. Um, and so in my head, I was like, well, what could, what could this possibly be? Um, and what I landed on was that it didn't actually have, like, it wasn't visible and it had more psychic abilities um, to sort of feed off of people's um nightmares and what they might think the snark looks like and then it just sort of transposes this image of that nightmarish form onto itself but only for that person to see (laughs) yes yes yeah very cool it's sort of like a a cross between an invisible stalker and a doppelganger uh living out in the wild that you could stumble across or uh, just very very fun um uh and uh, and i was super into it and the testers really reported having a lot of fun and players who were like oh no what is this uh what have we come across um so <laughs> yeah. and we actually have That's a, exactly what a question <laughs> from <laughs> uh we have a question from chat which is how would you describe sort of the mysterious nature of uh the snark how would I describe it? Um, I, I'm not even sure what, what that so question... So in terms of... Uh, I think that means in terms of uh, how would you describe it to your players if you were a GM and they had uh, were in a battle with the snark, what would you describe them seeing uh, and experiencing? 
I think as a DM, I would probably, um, before the session started, ask the question of what is like the scariest thing that you think you could you could face or what are, what are your deepest fears um you know no reason <laughs> no reason <laughs> yes uh, and then yes. sort of uh sort of insert that so that you know each player as an aside um you know you slip a note and say well this is what you see this is what you see this is what you see. Um, and then go from there and see what kind of chaos is unleashed at the table. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I love that, that everybody gets their own little piece of paper with what they see. Oh, that's amazing. And they would all react at the same time. Oh, I love it. I love that a lot. That's really cool. Um, well, this is, I mean, this is a lot of fun. This is a beloved article um, because of the creatures it brings to life, but also because of the way you've brought them to life with their, you know, really unique and fun abilities that we don't get to see a lot. And also because we get more Faye. Um, but let's talk about <laughs> you, Kat. Uh, what, what sort of things are you working on? Have you worked on that you would love for people to check out? Oh, um, so many things that are NDA right now. <laughs> um, well, uh, as you mentioned at the start, you know, I, I did work on on the Nerds uh, D&D collaboration. So that was really fun. Unfortunately, that's, you know, that's that's come to pass. So uh, some of the things I've been working on lately, actually, one of the things uh, that came out in the fall that would be related to this is um, I did a dungeon craft for Adventures League called A Stitch in Time. And I got to to make my own domain as part of this dungeon craft. So they selected, I think, 10 of us um, to create domains. And this domain of delight is uh, based on Alice in Wonderland. It is a clockwork wonderland. Um, and it's ruled what? by an art, a clock fay, arch fay, ar arch fay who um, uh, essentially like a, a, a modron wa uh, wandered into the fay and this whole domain exists because that happened so you're going to see um your your guide is um is the royal artificer uh, a heron gong named a white heron gong named a hairspring who's very much like the white rabbit um and you'll get some of the cute creatures that are from uh, uh wild beyond the witch light like the campestry um it's very much a low combat type of um adventure it's a lot of puzzle solving um chess pieces uh number hurting just a whole bunch of weird things happening in this adventure so uh stitch in time is uh is that one uh recently i also wrote uh well it's on the dm's guild now it's um one of the ravenloft miss hunters um adventures league adventures um it's called uh, uh the palace of bones uh so it's it takes place in uh, Ikath, um, and it's with one of the, the dream dark lords. Um, and what else? Um, Betrayal at House on the Hill is the latest board game that I worked on, and that's uh, coming out. I think it's available for pre-order on Hasbro Pulse now. And Oh, yes. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, D20 Dames, we're, we just uh, wrapped up our first campaign um, back in the fall, and we're sort of um, working towards uh, our next campaign, um, which is starting imminently. Um, so <gasps> it's a really great, great time to uh, just sort of binge all four, four years of our, <laughs> of our campaign. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, we're we're um, we're about to head into uh, a new new uh, campaign, new season. Um, yeah, so it's D twenty Dames, uh, and you can find the rest of my work at steampunkunicornstudio.com. Excellent, excellent. And if people want to follow you on social media, where should they go? Uh, Twitter is the best spot, uh, and it's just at Cat Kruger. Excellent, excellent. Well, go follow Kat. Go check out all of the cool stuff that Kat is doing. Uh, Kat, thank you so much for coming on and for talking to us about Monsters of Wonderland and everything great that you are doing in the world of tabletop games. Thanks so much for having me. It was so much fun. Excellent.